Hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer Dixon and in today's yoga class we are going to get a little movement into all of our body, working some flexibility as well as strength. You know me, I love to focus on the strength component that can be found in yoga. So without further ado, go ahead and make sure you've got your mat. We're not going to use any props today, but if you do like to use a block for like a triangle or extended side angle, that is definitely something that we can try to do. Um, the main focus I'm going to think about today is pelvic stability. As yogis, we um, tend to really focus on um, flexibility, uh, working on that flexibility, like in the, the hip flexors and the hamstrings and the quads, and not as much so on the stability of the, the whole pelvic girdle. So those glute med, glute men, um, the side body exercises. So let's go ahead and get started with that, shall we? We're going to get started in a child's pose. I want to have my knees together, heels together, hips pressing back into the heels, hands pressing forward and into the mat, a nice and active child's pose. That forehead's gonna go ahead and press into the mat and slowly just drop everything. Let all of those thoughts fall out of the top of the head like you're spilling some coffee, except it's all your thoughts. That might be a little sacrilegious, right? Let's walk our hands over towards the right, getting a little bit of a side body stretch. If you can, the forehead goes back down to the mat. If it doesn't meet, that's okay. It could depend on your mobility and your low back as well as your anatomy. You should feel a stretch all the way up, maybe even into your triceps and lats. Let's go back towards center and go over towards the left. Again, thinking about stretching out that entire right side body, right hip pressing down towards the heels, right hand pressing down towards the mat, and then just really enjoy this as we stretch here. Coming back through center, let's come up to a tabletop position. Hands stacked directly underneath the shoulders, the knees are under the hips, and let's move through a couple of rounds of cat-cow. You're gonna drop the belly looking up, and then round through the spine like a Halloween cat. Let's do that a couple more times. Drop the belly, looking up, and then rounding here. This is my favorite way to kind of get the, the kinks out, if you will. And then when you're ready, you can start to move in a way that feels good to you. Maybe that's side to side, maybe it's some barrel rolls, whatever feels kind of good to you. Paying attention to not lock those elbows. We want to stay in the muscles and not exacerbate the joints. A lot of times folks that are drawn to yoga are really flexible and can get into the joints and we want to protect those joints. All right, from here we're going to do a little bit more stretching. So bring the hands a little bit closer to the center. Left hand comes right beneath your nose. You're going to reach that right hand up towards the sky. Maybe your gaze follows it. And then like you're hugging a big tree, take that right arm underneath your body. Inhale, come up towards the heavens. Oh, and then take it underneath the body. Last one, nice thoracic mobility here. Oh, I got a nice pop. I don't know if you heard it. Roll it on through. And let's do that on the other side. Right hand presses down just beneath the nose. Don't lock out that elbows. Endeavoring to keep those hips nice and square. Reach those left hands up. Oh, and then take it over and under. And then reach. Try to draw the tummy in to protect that low back and under. Last one, reach. How far can you go? And then take it under. And then let's come back to this tabletop position. Last few moments before we get going, plug those toes into the mat and come into your very first downward facing dog. I like to hang out here in the down dog just for a few breaths. When I was much younger, I had to wiggle around a little bit to find it. Now I really prefer a nice static down dog hold just to kind of check in to see what's going on with my body. You do you. Your gaze is towards your belly button or maybe in between your knees if that doesn't serve your neck. Your elbows are not locked out. They're straight but not locked. And if you have a hard time figuring that out, you can go ahead and bend them. Pull the shoulders away from the ears and try to activate these angel wings, your lat muscles drawing your tummy in. We're going to be here for another breath. From here, let's walk our hands back to our feet. This is the very first forward fold. So bend your knees as much as you need to. 
so you can relax the low back. There's a connection between the low back and the hamstrings. And so if we bend the knees, it's, it's a little bit less stress on the hammy so we can get into the low back, which I typically need first thing in the morning. Clasp those hands behind your back and then let them go. If you tend to lock out your elbows like I do and they can turn the wrong way, have a softer bend here, especially first thing in your practice, you're gonna notice a different stretch across the front of your shoulders. I like to keep my chin slightly tucked to get a little bit more length here. And releasing here, push down through both big toes, draw the tummy up, let the head be the last thing to come up. So it's the belly button that leads the effort all the way up. Reach those hands up towards the sky. Oh, and then let's go ahead and do a sun salutation, shall we? So go ahead, have your feet directly under those hip bones maybe, or you can have toes together, heels slightly apart. Inhale, reach the hands up, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, pull your head back, lifting up halfway. Since we're here at the back of the mat, let's walk our hands out to a high plank. Hold this, inhale here. Exhale, now gazing slightly forward, push forward onto the toes, lower down to your chaturanga. Knees are always an option. Rolling over the toes, maybe, upward facing dog. Inhale, roll over those toes and come to your downward facing dog. I love the rollover on the toes. It feels so good on the toes. Notice how I took a step forward with the down dog. That enables me to get a little bit more connection with the core which is what we want, right? We want to stay strong and in our center at all times. It is springtime here where I am, and so my sinuses love it. I'm thankful for the spring. It's no longer winter, right? Look between those hands. Inhale here. Exhale. Go ahead and walk yourself forward. Inhale. Pull the shoulders back. Halfway lift. And exhale. Fold. See if this forward fold feels any different. Inhale, rounding yourself up. Be careful not to dump in the low back as you reach your hands up really high. Exhale, hands to your side, mount pose. Let's do that just one more time. Inhale, hands up, look up, reach up, maybe a tiny back bend if that serves you. Exhale, forward fold. Let those hands hit the mat as you tuck the chin here. Inhaling, halfway lift. Pull the belly in, shoulders back. Exhale, hands stay planted on the mat as you walk, step, or jump your feet back to this high plank. Check in, make sure your bottom's not sinking or your bottom's not floating up above the head. Inhale, push yourself forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, coming through your upward facing dog, endeavoring to keep the tummy nice and strong. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, here in this downward dog, check in with the body. Do the movement that you need to do. You may notice my feet are a little bit wider than hip socket distance. It just makes me feel a little more grounded and secure. Helps me to find the tummy muscles a little bit better. You can do you. You can have them hip socket distance apart if you'd like. One more breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, walk those feet forward. Maybe you're ready to jump. I wasn't quite. Inhale, pull the shoulders back halfway. Lift and then fold. Inhale, roll yourself all the way back up. And then the hands come to your side, mountain pose. Let's do a Surya Namaskar B, Sun B. Inhale, coming into your chair pose. Sit low as you reach up really high. You're going to find there's a tug of war as the more you reach your hands back, the more the ribs want to flare, belly wants to disengage. So try to keep those ribs nice and strong. Back is nice and straight and long. Tailbone pelvis is in a neutral position. One more breath here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, move back to your high plank. Hold this plank, one inhale. I love sneaky core. One exhale. Now push yourself forward, next inhale. And then exhale, forward, 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 down to that chaturanga. Inhaling, let's come all the way up to the upward facing dog. Maybe the gaze goes up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Go ahead and plant that left foot down at the back of the mat in the 45 degrees. Bring that right foot forward, setting up here for warrior one. Draw your hands up towards the sky. Rotate those pinkies towards each other. Try to draw your left hip forward, left shoulder forward. 
Feel the terrific stretch here along the left hip flexor as we sink into the right knee. Again, don't let the ribs flare out. We want to have a nice, strong warrior here. One more breath. Next inhale, we're going to reach up a little higher. And then the exhale plants the hands. See if you can ride the exhale all the way down to your chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Plant that right heel down at the back of the mat. Bring that left foot forward, setting up here for your warrior one on the other side. Reach the hands up. Notice that the more you reach the hands up, the more stretch you feel here in the psoas hip flexor region. We're endeavoring to have the hips squared off towards the front of the room, but we don't want cheerleader booties, right? That's kind of hard on the back. So it's this nice tug of war between the effort and ease, the stretch and the flex. Reaching those hands up. One more breath. And then on the exhale, take the hands down to the mat. Ride the same exhale all the way down. Inhale, coming up, upward facing dog. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. Roll over those feet if you can. Downward facing dog. Catch your breath. One more. From here, let's look between those hands. Exhale, walk, step. Maybe you're ready to jump. I wasn't quite. To the top of the mat. Pull the shoulders back. Inhale here. Exhale, fold. Notice the difference here between this forward fold and the forward fold from the beginning of the class. Inhale, let's come back to your Utkatasana chair pose. Notice how much different this one feels since we've moved a bit. Exhale, mountain pose. All right, so now let's get to moving some. We're going to come right back to that chair pose. Sit low, reach high. Squeeze the knees together. Squeeze the toes together. Find the midline firing up as you internally, think about internally spiraling those thighs perhaps. Keep squeezing the knees together. Find that inner thigh, those hip adductors, excuse me, firing up. That's going to be the first part of our pelvic stability exercise. Keep squeezing and notice how maybe that helps you to sit down a little lower. Finding that neutral pelvis, so those bony landmarks at the front of the hips, the front of your pubic bone, they're all kind of in one line. Keep pressing down as you reach up. Those thighs talking to you yet? One more breath. On the exhale, forward fold. Say a little prayer here. <laughs> nice long hamstrings and back maybe. Inhale, halfway lift, draw the belly in. From here, let's take that left foot down, back to the back of the mat and drop the left knee. We're going to do a little bit of a low lunge here to stretch the left hip flexors as we reach the hands up really high. Feel that terrific stretch along the psoas, the front of the body. One more breath here. Oh, let's take that left hand down to the mat. Reach that right hand up towards the sky. A nice twist. Keep that right knee nice and bent. We're going to swivel that left foot behind us. And then using the side body, lift the right leg up. Here we are in a modified side plank. I like to flex that right foot a lot to find this right butt cheek. That right foot is pressing into the imaginary wall matrix style. Try not to flare your belly out, so keep everything nice and knitted in. Beautiful. Keep pressing and reaching, pressing and reaching, pressing and reaching. Take that right hand behind your head. We're going to try to kiss the right elbow and right knee. So here we are for five. And four. And three. Two. And one. Your hips feeling it yet? Core feeling it yet? I hope so. Take the right hand down. Bring the right knee down. And here we are. You can do your, your vinyasa, the high plank to low plank on your knees. Or you can come up to the toes. I love to do some chaturanga push-ups just like so. All right. Let's do that here on the other side. Take that left foot. Bring it forward. Drop the right knee down. And then sink into the hip some. Feel this hip flexor stretch. It should feel pretty amazing. I'm going to reach my hands up. This is my tighter hip flexor. It kind of takes me a minute to get into it. I have to kind of wind and dine it. And notice how as we reach our hands up, the stretch goes from just down here 
to kind of up here in this upper part of the psoas. It's wonderful. Take that right hand down to the mat, reaching that left hand up towards the sky. Keep that left knee nice and bent. Feeling the nice stretch here along the low back with this twist. We're going to swivel the right foot back and behind us now. Use that left side body to lift the left leg up. Again, pre keep that left foot nice and flex matrix style. Check in here with the right arm. Try not to lock the right elbow and push the earth away from you so the shoulder has lots of space between the shoulder and the ear. That left leg is strong. We could bounce a quarter off your tushy maybe. Keep using that left side glute to facilitate this crunching movement. Left hand behind the head. Let's take it in for five and out. Four and out. Three, out. Two, last one, one. Nicely done. Reach, grow really tall and long in this side plank position. Plant the left hand, coming down to the knees, maybe. This time we're going to do three chaturanga push-ups. I'll show you how to do it on my knees for a couple, and then we'll do some on the toes. You ready? Look forward, and then drop the elbows into the body, and then push yourself up. It's so much different than a push-up at the gym. Drop the body, and then lift up. Now, if you want to do it on your toes, make sure your booty doesn't go up in the air and your booty doesn't sag. So look forward, push forward, one plank is on the back, and then lift back up. Notice how everything stays together. Push forward, don't let the booty sag or the shoulder sag, and then push it up. Downward facing dog. Here we are, warming up through the core. Let's go a little bit deeper here. Bring that right foot forward, coming into your warrior one. Our hip flexor so I should be a little happier with us now, hopefully. And now let's open up warrior two. Now we want to maintain a nice deep lunge, but not at the sake of our joints. So I could go super deep here, but then I'm in my joints. I'm not in the muscles. So find that place between effort and ease. If extended side angle suddenly gets easier, that probably means you're in your joints, not extended side angle, excuse me, warrior two instead of your muscles. So find that place that's harder and then come to your extended side angle. You can have your right elbow at that right knee, left hand reaching forward. But if you tend to live in your shoulders, having lots of knots in the shoulders, I invite you to internally spiral that right left arm and do a half bun. That helps you to stay out of the shoulders. Now, if you want to juice it up, take that right elbow off the right thigh and maybe you hold your right hand out in front of you like you're holding a tray. Now again, remember, your right leg is working. Your left leg is working. So if you are down in a lunge so much that the effort kind of goes away, back it off and find that spot where your whole leg is working. One more breath here. Now we're gonna inhale back here to warrior two, and then exhale, windmill those hands down to the mat, roll over to the toes of the left foot. Take the right foot to meet it and move through your vinyasa. Catch your breath here. That right leg should be talking to you. That's what we kind of want. We're warming up the leg muscles to help facilitate the, the I guess we're going to call it the climax exercise we're looking for. So when you're ready, let's bring that left foot forward. Drop that right heel down. Let's come into our warrior one. Again, feel the difference now between this one and the first one. Maybe it feels a little better. Maybe you feel like you can get into this lunge a little better because this hip flexor is a little more open. Well, even if it's not, just, just acknowledge it. Hands reach straight up for the sky. Let's open up warrior two. Now again, I can make it super deep, but as soon as I do, this is all into my joints and my hips and my pelvis and in my knees. So if I back out, I suddenly have to feel these leg muscles work more. And that's what we're wanting. The hips, the pelvis, it's all going to open up over time. If we dump, that equals instability, could also equal pain. So try not to dump into things, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're super mobile. Technically, if it's harder, that's probably you're doing it right. That's the joke I usually make in my classes. Take that left elbow to that left thigh. Swoop that right arm forward. Here we are in a nice extended side angle. 
Again, if you have a hard time keeping yourself out of those upper traps, the shoulders, I invite you to take this half bind. It feels amazing. It automatically helps to stretch out the upper traps and it might even help to bring your chest back some so you can have this shoulder stacked position. This is really hard. If I dump, then I, I'm not having to work as hard. Up here, I have to really work. You can hold the hand out in front of you if you'd like to have a little bit more oblique action happening. Elbow down is perfectly acceptable, especially if you're new and especially if your legs are like, holy cow. Keep breathing here. One more breath. Now come back to your warrior two. Squeeze the legs together while at the same time you're kind of pushing them apart. It's this nice tug of war, effort and ease here, right? And let's windmill those hands down to the mat and take your vinyasa. Two breaths here as we figure out what's going on in the hips. The hips should be talking to you. They're, they're giving you some feedback and listen to them. Don't judge. Just, just kind of acknowledge what's going on. From here, we're going to look between those hands and then walk those feet up to the top of the mat. Pull the shoulders back, halfway lift, and then go ahead and forward fold. Feel those hamstrings, how they're feeling a little longer. Again, I love to tuck my chin here. It helps me to get a little more length through the back of the spine. We're gonna come into a chair pose once again. So sit down really low, chest, belly, everything connected to the thighs. Then bring your hands up, pull your body off of the thighs and see how low you can go here in your, your chair pose. We're gonna twist this out. So bring your hands to your heart center. Make sure your spine is nice and long. Your pelvis is still nice and neutral here. Protect that low back. Take that left elbow to the outer edge of that right thigh and see if you can twist this out. If you can bring your thumbs to your chest, awesome. If you can't, they're out here, totally okay. More important that you have this nice, stable low back and you're encouraging the twist to come from the upper thoracic. A way to check in here is to make sure your toes are together and your heels are together. If those are together, then that generally means your low back is nice and square, your hips are square, and the movement's coming from this upper back, which is what we're wanting right here. Gaze is over the right shoulder if you can. Sit down a little lower if you can. One more breath. Coming back to your chair pose. Holy smokes, thighs are talking. And then exhale, straighten everything out. Open those feet up about hips width distance apart and forward fold. Grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers here and let's pull ourselves down. Another beautiful hamstring stretch. Let your head hang low or you can tuck a little bit of the chin to get into the neck some more. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite thing to do. I like to give myself my own little neck traction. <laughs> Too many years staring at a desk. From here, we've had enough little break. Let's shimmy those toes back together. Sink down really low into the knees. We have to do both sides, right? Come back to your chair pose. Rotate the pinkies towards each other. Sit really low. Remember that inner thigh connection that we found and the internal spiral in the very first chair pose. Lots of length here through the spine. I don't love leaning forward. That tends to put a lot of pressure in the low back. So the chair poses that tend to, tend to do the best for my body are reaching up really high. It also helps me to connect a little bit more to these outer thighs. Bring those hands to the heart center and then right elbow to the outer edge of the left thigh. Now notice the difference between sides. One side may be a lot easier to get into than the other. I tend to have a harder time twisting to the left. It's just me. Don't judge it. Just say, okay, that's the way it is. Again, look down at the toes, make sure they're in line. Make sure the knees are in line. And then you can do a little feedback. Make sure the heat hips are in line by checking yourself out with your hands. Gaze is over those left shoulders. One more breath. Nicely done. Inhale, come back to chair. Holy smokes, those legs are on fire. One more breath. Beautiful, stand all the way up. Maybe shake the legs out if you need to. Open the feet, hip sockets distance, and let's forward fold. We're gonna do a Pada Hastasana or Gorilla Pose. Slide your hands underneath the feet, walk the toes all the way up to the wrist. Head up here for the inhale and just check in with what's going on with your spine. And then tuck it all down, pull yourself down, Pada Hastasana. 
We're trying to fold ourselves into ourselves. And notice how if you draw the tummy in and up, like you're tucking that belly button underneath the rib cage, how it helps you to get a little closer maybe. Ooh, I'm feeling this in the calves now. One more breath here. All right, so releasing those hands. We're gonna plant them on the mat in front of the feet. And now let's start to get some real work going on. Take that left foot back and behind you and let's pull ourselves up to a crescent lunge. Now this is what we've been working towards our entire class. This whole exercise is gonna really work the standing leg a whole bunch from the glutes to the hammies, even into the quads. This is all about stability. It's gonna help you to balance. Notice how I have a wall right in front of me. I would kind of want to be next to a wall, especially the first time, especially if balance is an issue. So we're going to inhale here from crescent lunge and then take our hands to heart center. Anytime your hands are close, proximal into the body, it's going to help you to balance a little better versus when they're distal further away. Draw the tummy in, pull the shoulders back. We're going to push ourselves off and come into this warrior three posture. Now, we're endeavoring to have that left hip in line with the right hip. Lots of energy out through that left foot. Now, everybody's familiar with this posture. Notice how your right leg is on fire. Now, we're going to open up here to half moon. If you want, you can extend your arms in opposite directions. Sometimes that helps to act as a counterbalance. Remember that kneeling legs lift we did in that side plank. That's how active that left hip is. Now we're gonna go back to this warrior three. Holy smokes. Keep breathing here. One more. Now dip the left hip below the right hip. That's where the crap just got real. And then lift it all the way back up, half moon. We're gonna do that two more times. Come back through airplane, dip the left hip, and then lift it all the way back up. That's two. Last one. Back to airplane or warrior three. Dip that hip. Come open to this half moon. Ooh, I lost it. Right hand had to come down to the mat. And then from here, we're going to bring that left foot forward. Swoop it forward. Set it down beside the right. Pull yourself back up into chair pose. A little bit of extra credit. And then standing up here, mountain pose. How did you like that? So that was a combination of warrior three, half moon, and then a warrior three with a bit of a hip dip. Sometimes this is called hip airplanes, like in the workout world. And I found it to be really awesome to help build some stability here in the hip as I recover from a hip injury. Shall we do this on the other side? I think we should. So let's inhale. We're going to take that right foot behind us coming into a crescent lunge. Hey, we skipped a vinyasa. <laughs> now remember, Balance helps you build core muscles. Anytime you're on one leg, the core has to really fire it up. And if you have the glutes nice and strong, that's also gonna to help to facilitate your balance. So at any point in time, if you wanna use your block, you can. You can reach down to the ground like I did on the other side, or you can reach out in front and try to hold on to a wall. Let's do that again. Remember, we're only doing this three times. We can do anything three times. So on the inhale, the hands reach up. Exhale, hands come to your heart center. That's gonna help us to balance a little better. We're gonna kick off here and come to our warrior three or airplane pose. Endeavoring to keep those hips nice and square. That's kind of the hardest part for me, especially on this side. Having those hips nice and square, right foot is pressing into the imaginary wall. Let's open up, half moon. We're gonna hold it here just for three breaths like we did on the other side. That right foot is nice and strong. Right butt cheek is firm. Let's come back to our half, I mean our warrior three. Nicely done. And now we're going to dip that hip down and then pull it all the way back up to half moon. That was one. Let's do it again. Here we go. Warrior three. Dip that hip down. Bring it all the way back up half moon. I'm snapping to help me with balance. Come back to warrior three. Draw the navel in. Ooh, I'm terrible on this side today. Drop the right hip down. Use the left butt cheek to help lift you back up. Airplane pose. And then opening it up, half moon. Notice how I'm using my hands to help facilitate this balance. Drop the hips down. 
Coming into your crescent lunge. Oh, I forgot we had to swoop that right foot forward. We're going to take a big step forward to the top of the mat. Come into chair pose. Oh, your hips should be talking to you. And then come to your mountain pose. Whoo, go ahead and rub them out. That was good, right? So the goal, if we have a goal, is to get to the point where we're doing that as many as 10 times, maybe even so, uh, three sets of those, if you like to do separate drills. So let's go ahead and start to cool off so we can go about our day. Coming back into chair pose because we love it. Only one inhale here. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhaling halfway up. Exhale, very last vinyasa of your day. Press those hands into the mat. Lift the body up. Maybe try to land quietly-ish at the back of the mat. Upward facing dog. And then downward dog. Go ahead and drop the knees down, plug the toes into the mat. Here we are sitting back on the heels, a little bit of toe screamer. Reach the hands up and then drop the right hand down as you reach the left hand over. How's that for not so cooling cool down? Ooh, my toes. Inhale coming up, left hand reaches down, right hand comes up and over, stretching out the side body that just did so much work making those toes work. Inhale, coming up. Go ahead, bring the hands down to the mat. Tap out the toes. And then we're going to shift the legs over towards the right. Come to a seated position on our bottoms. Let's just do one round of boat, but we'll do a kind of long round of boat because it's not a yoga class without boat pose, right? So boat number one, plant those feet onto the mat. Chest is nice and proud. You're on your sits bones here in the back is nice and straight. Boat number two, you pick up one or both legs. Reach those hands forward. And then the full expression is legs are straight out. Nice, proud chest. Pretend your favorite superhero just walked in. Keep breathing here. Now we're going to lower everything down and then lift it all the way back up. That was one. Let's do it again. Everything down. Lift it all the way back up. Let's do that three more times. Everything down. And then lift it back up. Two more. Everything down. And then lift. Last one. Everyone down. And then lift. And then slowly, slowly, slower, slowly, uh, lower everything. Give yourself a long body stretch. Say a little prayer. Bring those knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. You worked pretty hard today. I would say so. So you deserve this nice big congr congratulatory hug. Extend that left leg out really long. Keep the right leg in for this nice wind removing pose. It's one of my favorite hip flexor stretches. We're going to take that right leg across the body, giving yourself a nice gentle twist. You should feel a great stretch along the, the right side of your butt cheek. Hello, glute me, glute men, whole hip area. Take it back in towards the body. Bring the left knee in, squeeze them both in. And let's do that on the other side. Squeeze that left knee in. Really squeeze it in. Stretching out that right hip flexor. And then let's take it over to the other side. Woo-wee. You guys feel this in your butt cheeks? I love it. Bring that left knee in. Give it a squeeze. And then go ahead and plant both feet down onto the mat. We're going to do one, no, let's do two back bends. We'll do a bridge, then we'll do a wheel. So in yoga, we want to make sure we can touch those heels with our fingertips and then press the hands down into the mat firmly. Your chin is slightly up because you don't want to bring your chin to your chest. You want to bring your chest to your chin. Pressing down firmly through the back of the head, lift the hips up. Here we are in this nice bridge pose. If you can, shimmy, shimmy those arms closer together, and maybe you can clasp your hands together under your body, pressing the hands into the mat to help facilitate an extra little lift through the hips. For three, two, one. Lower everything down. We're going to do one more back bend. You can go right to bridge, or you could do another wheel. You ready? I'm going to do a wheel. So bring those hands, fingertips in line with the shoulders. Press through the big toes. Draw the tummy in, no matter what you're doing, then push through the big toes to lift yourself up into your back bend of choice. Now, we tend to back bend more in the low back 
So try to push your chest forward if you can to, to increase that mobility in the upper back shoulder region. Press it forward, lift it up for three, two, one. Slowly lower everything down. Bring those knees back into your chest. Give them a squeeze. And then let's reach those feet straight up for the sky. A little bit of an inversion so that all the blood that's like down here in our legs, as your body's thinking, holy crap, what did I just do? What did I just do? As it starts to come back to the heart, flushing out all the lactic acid. This is my favorite inversion. Sometimes it's called um, legs up the wall, the Bariti Karani, waterfall pose, lots of names. Go ahead, bring both knees into your chest. Squeeze. And then extend everything out long one more time. And then come to your final resting pose, your Shavasana. Remember, Shavasana is where the magic happens. So we've just been doing exercises, right? If we don't give our bodies time to acclimate to the changes that just happened throughout this practice. Combining breath with movement, intentional movement here. This is where the magic of yoga happens. So make sure you spend a few moments here just basking in the wonderfulness that is this feeling post-yoga practice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I hope you maybe tried something new. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to us on all the social media channels. It's Thrive Yoga and Wellness. Facebook, it's my place to thrive. And I hope that you will join me again very, very soon. Take care. Go in peace. Namaste.